This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Next numbers. Uh, and as it says in the introduction to the chapter, the purpose is to show the rate of change of a variable from one specified time to another, which sounds terribly exciting. Um, but the most common use is to measure the effect of inflation on prices. And to show you what I mean, look at example one. It says the price of coffee was $2.40 in 2006. Uh, it was $2.50 in 2007. Uh, and the same jar of coffee had gone up in 2008 to $2.60. So finally, you can see the price is rising. But if I told you that T... Oh, I, mean, I don't know the price of tea, but suppose a, a packet of tea used to cost 80 cents in 2006 and went up to um, 90 cents in 2007 and went up to $1.10 in 2008. Well, it's not immediately obvious which one is going up more because obviously they started with different prices. Tea here is always cheaper than coffee. But which one went up the most in 2007? You know, in percentage terms, which one went up the most in 2008? It's not immediately obvious. And so uh, index numbers are used to be able to make it much clearer. And what we do, going back to coffee, and since I wrote tea, I will do tea as well after. Uh, but we have a base here and we say here, we're going to use 2006 as a base. So let's suppose it cost 100 units in 2006. So with a base of 100, which is equivalent to $2.40, what would it be in 2007? Well, for every $2.40, it's gone up to $2.50. And so the index number... For every 100, it will have gone up to 250 divided by 240 times 100, which comes to 104.2. So effectively, although, although we don't give it units, we don't say this is dollars or anything, it does mean that effectively for every $100 worth of coffee in 2006, the same coffee would now cost $104.2. And what about 2008? Well, again, in 2006, it was 240. It's gone to 260. So it's 260 for every 240 that was 100. And so the index number for 2008, 260 divided by 240 times 100 is 108.33. Oh, I'm keeping it to one place, so 108.3. Uh, and so it becomes more obvious, you know, it's, in 2007 it was 4% more than it was in 2006. In 2008 it was 8% more than it was in 2006. But also, this is what I was saying earlier, it makes it much easier to compare increases in different things that look at T. Let's have a, the base year, the year when we have 100 as 2006. Well, for every 80 cents in 2006, by 2007 it was 90 cents. So the index number, 0 0.9, 0 0.8 times 100. The 2007 index for um, 2007 will be 100, no, that can't be right. Yes, 112.5. And similarly, in 2008, still with 2006 as our starting point, our base, and the starting point's always 100, well, it had gone from 80 to 110. So $1.10 divided by 0.8 times 100 
it goes to 137.5. And now, you see, we can compare coffee and tea. It's just a lot more obvious. Looking at those index numbers, since they both start with 100, it's clear that tea has gone up massively more than coffee, which wasn't as obvious just by looking at the original figures, um, because you know you can't immediately compare two dollar forty with um, uh, eighty cents and so on. So that's all it is. It's a lovely little exercise. Uh, also, make sure you can use before I do the next example. Make sure you can use it backwards. What I mean by that. Suppose I give you index numbers for chocolate. And I say, oh, in 2006 was our base, it was 100. 2007, it was 108. 2008, it was 112. And 2009 was 120. Well, the sort of thing you could be asked. Now, here, you, we haven't worked out the index numbers, obviously. They've been given to us. But suppose I tell you, in 2008, chocolate cost... Ooh, um, $2.50. What did it cost... in 2007. Well, think about it, but make sure, don't just learn a rule, you know, if we've understood index numbers, this is easy. We know that in 2008, the index number was 112. We know in 2007, it was 108. So for every $112 in 2008, 2007 would have cost $108. And so the cost in 2007 will have been 108 for every 112 of the $2.50 it was in 2007. It would have been $2.41 to the nearest cent. Just here, you've got it. For the same question, if in 2008 it cost 250, what did it cost in 2009? Have a go yourself quickly. Fine, you should have done it by now. I know how you would have done it. Um, in 2008, it was $2.50. Well, the index number in 2008 was 112. And so for every $112 in 2008, in 2009, it would have gone up to 120. And so what will it have gone to? It's 120 for every 112 of the $2.50. In 2009, it would have been, oops, $2.68. Okay, well, I hope that makes sense. Now, those, example one and bringing the tea, the chocolate, those were price index numbers. Uh, and that's the most common way index numbers are used to look at the way prices have gone up. You can do the same thing, though, on quantities. It's much less common and less relevant. But look at example two. Here, instead of giving you uh, the costs, we saw, uh, I've written how many packets of tea were sold in each of three years. It was 8,200, then it went to 9,000, then it went to 9,400. And again, although I'm not going to here, if I did give you sales of coffee as well, then given um, you know, a different starting point, perhaps uh, coffee in 2008, you were selling 16,000 jars. Well, if I told you what coffee was in 2009 and 2010, it wouldn't be immediately obvious which one was growing in sales in quantities the most. And so again, let them both have a base year where it's 100, 
and restate in terms of that base. So it says use 2008 as a base. So in 2008, we always start with 100, always. In 2009, It's gone from 8,200 to 9,000. And so, basing it on 100, for every 8,200, it's gone up to 9,000. And so, the quantity index would be 109.8. It's 9.8% 9 higher than in 2008. And what about 2010? Well, sticking to the same base year all the way through, uh, for every, for 8,200, it's gone up to 9,400. And so the index number based on 100 in 2008 would be 114.6. So there are our index numbers. Again, the base year, we decide on the base in the exam you're told, and it's always on 100. And here, the quantities each year are being restated uh, based on that 100. So I hope that makes sense, and, that, that, well, and I hope it's easy enough. However, taking it one bit further, um, although we can work out index numbers, as we have done, on individual items, the price of coffee or the sales of tea, a very common use in real life is by governments to work out an average rate of inflation. And rather than just look at one item, they take what we call a typical shopping basket. To get the overall effect of inflation, they take a big list of things that the average person buys. You know, perhaps the average person buys uh, in a year 20 jars of coffee, uh, um, well, and so on. <laughs> An example free uh, coffee, sugar, bread. But they take what the average person buys and works out the index number on um, the overall shopping basket rather than on individual items. And let me show you how we do it, looking at example three. Example three, below are stated the quantities and unit prices for a typical shopping basket in each of the years 2008, 2009, 2010. And so coffee, for example, in 2008, People were buying 20 jars, and the price was $4. In 2009, the price had gone up to $4.50, and they were only buying 15 jars. In 2010, they're still buying 15, but the price has gone to $4.80. And similarly, sugar, tea. But there is our typical shopping basket, what they buy and what the price is. Well, it says calculate price index numbers with 2008 as a base year. But to make it sensible, if we want to look at the effect of changes in prices, we need to compare the price of the same shopping basket each year. And there are two ways we can do that. Um, the two types are called, as you can see, La Sperre and Parche. And I'll do La Spare first of all, because I say again, uh, we need to use the same shopping basket each year, the same quantities each year, to be able to measure the effect of the price changes. And what La Spare does, we always use the base year shopping basket, or base year quantities. And so what we mean by that, and let's work out the prices, in 2008, coffee, sugar, bread, well, they bought 20 coffee 
at four dollars each, so they will have, they'll have spent eighty dollars on coffee. They bought fifteen sugars at sixty cents each, so that will be what six nine dollars on sugar and thirty breads at eighty cents each. Twenty four dollars on bread. So the total cost in two thousand and eight was 80 plus 9 plus 24, $113. Before we get the index number, we then work out what the same shopping basket would have cost in 2009. So the same shopping basket, it'll be 20 coffees, 15 sugars, 30 breads. Uh, but the price, Coffee was four dollar fifty. Uh, sugar was um, seventy cents. Ten dollar fifty. And bread had gone up to a dollar. And so uh, the price of that same shopping basket had gone up to a hundred and thirty dollar fifty. And similarly, uh, 2010, same shopping baskets of same quantities, 20, 15 and 30. But what would that basket have cost now? Um, coffee for 80 is a total of 96. Uh, sugar, a dollar is 15. And bread, a dollar ten, is thirty-three, uh, which gives us a total of a hundred and forty-four. If I've got my arithmetic right, I think. I'm. So, see what we've got there: the price of the same quantities in each of the three years. And now we can do the index number. Uh, it says base year is 2008, so the index number 100. Uh, what would it have been in 2009? Well, in exactly the same way as we did uh, in example 1. 100, it's gone to 130.50 from 113, which gives an index number of... One one five point five, and in the year uh, last year, two thousand and ten, well, it's gone from one hundred and thirteen to one hundred and forty-four, which gives us an index of one twenty-seven point four. Uh, so that's our spare. Again. Um, We've got to have the same quantities in each year to make sense of it. Um, but we're just costing out the same quantities in each year and then converting it into an index number. Now that's fine. Uh, the one big problem though, if you want to turn over and fill it in, it says advantages and disadvantages, which is a bit much. But the problem with La Spare is that, of course, the shopping basket goes out of date. But, you know, by 2010, people are no longer buying 20 coffees. Tastes have changed. They're buying less coffee and more sugar uh, and a lot more bread. Um, and over time, it starts to get a bit silly. Uh, the shopping basket goes out of date. You know, people buy less sugar these days. Not happening there, but it, people seem to be buying less sugar. And it could be, you know, in another 10 years that people aren't buying sugar at all. And yet with La Spare, we'd still have it sat in the shopping basket and it becomes meaningless. Uh, not only does it become out of, well, an extreme example of it becoming out of date is after a while, some items might no longer be available. Uh, 
Um, you know, if um, we had a base uh, of 20 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, people were buying uh, big records, you know, CDs didn't exist, or perhaps 30 years ago, CDs didn't exist. People were buying vinyl. Now, I know uh, the big records are now coming back in fashion, but there was a period when it was irrelevant. You couldn't buy them anymore. Instead, it was CDs. Things change. People were buying videotapes 20 years ago. That would have been in the shopping basket. But these days, they, they don't produce videotapes anymore. Uh, how do we know what the price is? It's, it's nonsense. And so what happens with La Spare is that periodically um, they'll start again with a new shopping basket and bring it up to date. So they might go, there's no limit, they might go 10 years on one shopping basket, then decide it's, get, you know, it's too much out of date. And so they might start all over again with an up-to-date shopping basket and a new base. Anyway, it does go out of date, and so part answer to it is the alternative, which is Parsh. And what Parsh does, same sort of thing, but we always use the current periods shopping basket or the current periods quantities. Now this is a bit more complicated, well complicated is the wrong word, but we have to be a little bit more careful because our base is 2008. When we're working out the 2009 index, we compare the 2009 quantities at the base period's prices and at 2009's prices. So with the 2009 index, 2000, for 2008, coffee, sugar, bread, we take the 2009 quantities, 15, 18, and 35, 15, 18, 35, and we work out the cost of the whole basket at the prices in 2008 to 2009. So in 2008, coffee was $4, uh, sugar was 60 cents, uh, bread was 80 cents, And so the 2009 quantities would have cost 98.80. And what would those quantities have cost in 2009? Uh, coffee is 450, sugar is 70, bread is a dollar. And so the cost of the same basket would be hundred and fifteen point one, and therefore the index number for two thousand nine. Well, remember two thousand and eight is the base, and so is a hundred. For two thousand and nine, uh, for every ninety eight, it's gone to one hundred and fifteen. So 115.1 over 98.8 times 100. Comes to 116.5. So that's fine. 
Except when we come to 2010, same sort of thing, except we always use current year's quantities. We'll work out the 2010 quantities at base period price and at current price. So we have to do it all over again. Remember, 2008 is the base, and we're trying to work out the index of 2010. So, with PASH, we take 2010 quantities, which are 15 coffee, 20 sugar, 40 bread, and we compare the 2010 price with the 2008 price. So in 2008, it was $4 uh, for coffee, it was 60 cents for sugar, it was 80 cents for bread, which comes to what, 4.32? So a total of 72, 74.104. Uh, and what did the same basket cost in 2010? For 80, a dollar, a dollar 10. The same basket in 2010 would be 15 times 480, 72, 20, 44, uh, 136. So what's the index number going to be for 2010? 2008, remember, is the base is 100. 2010, 104 goes up to 136. The index number would be 130.8. Now, I'm not going to wind back to my spare and compare because obviously there are two different ways of doing it. Uh, this one is a bit messier though, uh, because each index number has to be worked out in full separately. Uh, I think you've seen what, I, what I've done. Uh, now, is that better, is it worse? Um, the good thing about it, again, if you want to write down on the next page, is of course the shopping basket is always up to date. People's ha buying habits do change, so we are always up to date. That's good. But there are two big problems. Uh, one is you can't compare individual numbers. You see, with Las Fair, those index numbers were all calculated using the same quantities. So you can compare 115.5 with 127.4. It was the same quantities each time. With PASH, though, You can't compare the 2009 index with the 2010 index because they were different quantities. So you cannot compare from year to year. And the other problem, of course, is that although the merit is that you are using current quantities, what people currently buy, there's still the problem that, you know, these days people buy, oh, music, they tend to buy digital downloads. So fine, that will be in our current basket. But if the base period is 20 years ago, well, Digital downloads weren't available 20 years ago. How can you work out the price of the current basket? So, um, current items may not have been available. In the base year. Uh, and so there we are. I mean, there's no what you might call best way. Uh, certainly governments, uh, when they're calculating um, inflation indexes like this, 
Uh, they tend to use La Sphere always. It's the same basket each year, but then every so often uh, they start again with a new base and a new basket. But anyway, there we are. As always, have a go at the um, online multiple choice test. Uh, check you've got it.